Hi guys, welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to show you how to beat Ekthar, the Shield of Savathun, which is the first real boss of the new Ghosts of the Deep Dungeon. I'm going to be showing you obviously my subclass, which you can see there is an Arc Warlock, I'm using Chaos Reach. Uh, I decided to go with a primary shotgun, uh, uh, energy uh, wave frame grenade launcher and the deterministic Chaos machine gun. As we go through I'll explain why I made those decisions. I'm using uh, a bunch of mods that I'm going to show you. Uh, you'll be, you would have seen at the start. And I'm using the Geomag stabilizers to make my Chaos Reach last longer. All the fragments, aspects, mods, everything was shown at the video. But I'll, we'll talk more about them as we're going through. So, the mechanics of this. This seems like there's a lot for one encounter. But hopefully this will maybe simplify it. Your first protocol, once you kill those four guys, is to kill three blistering knights and, and then one keeper of the deep ogre. That will help you, that will progress to the next step. So, as you can see, I, there is a, a blistering knight on the left, there is a blistering knight up top where I am now, and there's a blistering knight over by the right. And the whole time, Ekthar is going to be monitoring proceedings from one of the sides. Now, you can get Ekthar to move. As you've seen when I was going up the top there, he was moving to come and counter me. You don't have to stand in the same place, but be wary of his uh, suppression grenades because when he suppresses you, you can't use any abilities. So you don't really want to get caught with that type of stuff. Now, again, I said I would explain my choices. Deterministic Chaos weakens targets, so it's, it debuffs the boss for me when it gets the boss damage. And as you can see, it really does a good job against nearly all the adds. The reason why I'm using this grenade launcher is because, well, it's got chain reaction, but all, all though the disciple weapons give you health back when you reload them. So really, and Heritage is a DPS weapon for me. Once you do all those, once you kill that ogre, you will get a deep sight down at the bottom where I just activated it. And once you activate it, there's four plates on each side. They will produce three symbols. This now starts the second part. You have to dive down into the cavern and find the location of the three correct symbols. Now to help Mars, here's a map. They are static. They do not change every time you come down here. Those symbols will be in the same place all the time. For point of reference, I always drop down at the bottom right. I call that symbol turret. I always have. If you go back to my pet heresy flawless solo video, that is what I've always called that. You're the south side of Manhattan. I've heard some crazy call outs, but it's what you assign to that symbol means something to you. So, and it'll resonate. So I always drop down bottom right because I know where I am from that location. You don't have to learn the locations of the symbols and you can drop down at any of the four points. There are four points you can drop down. Now the mechanics have been down here. As you can see, you've got that pressure resistance. Every time you collect that air bubble, like so, you re you refill your pressure resistance. If the boss, Ekthar, yes, he's down here as well and he's chasing you pretty hard. If he stomps you, which is his damage thing down here, he will he'll take a lot of your pressure resistance away from you. That can kill you. So you'll see here, I'm going to get away from him, but he's going to stomp, and I lose about 40% of my pressure resistance. Now you can see when you lose pressure resistance, you've got like an overshield on your pressure. When that, that, when that bar goes down, not your, pre, not your health bar, it's like an overshield on your health bar. When that goes down, you're dead, right? So it's try... Mobility matters when you're down in the deep. So make sure you've got decent mobility. I don't have decent mobility. I think I only had about three mobility. That the faster the more mobility you've got, faster you are. Once you do all three of the correct symbols, you will come back up top and you will have three light bearer wizards. Those light bearer wizards, once you kill them and you finish their ghost, will imbue you with light and you get about a minute of it in 18 seconds. Of, of, of a timer if you do not deposit them at one of the relevant statues you will die you can carry more than one like it will say as you can see that says vestige of light now i'm going to kill this next wizard and i will get vestige of light times two 
Picking up a second vestige will not reset the timer. So you see here, I've got a minute and four seconds and it never reset the timer. I would suggest on average, it's what I normally do. Let's run with slightly different is make sure, as you can see here, I'm going to do it anyway. Always make sure that the last uh, statue that you imbue with light is one of the ones on the left or right. Because when you imbue the last one, then you get this guy, the Whale Keeper Knight. You need to kill him because he drops like a, you see there, that kind of, it's a little star on the floor. That little, you see there, that, you need to have that kind of piercing light buff to break his shield. Now you get a timer, you don't have, you don't have to stand in it, but you have to be in it to get it. I always just stay here because of the way I'm doing DPS. Once you break his shield, he will obviously take him out of his super, and then you go through damage. This is where the Deterministic Chaos and my Arc uh, subclass really come into play. What you'll see there, because I want to keep my... You want to keep your abilities, the relevant abilities, up for when you need to do damage. But when you come out of damage, you still need to be able to survive. And that's the great thing about, so I've got Arc Souls, you would have seen that. My Arc Souls were damaging enemies while I was in the, while I was in my Rift. And because of the Ionic Traces, I'm getting my Grenade, my Melee, my Whale back. So, for me, the Arc subclass is very, very, very good. I know it's probably not as good as, you know, Dodge and Punch Hunter, but I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of sick of that subclass being good for everything. And Hammer Titan, well... From what I am aware, Hammer Titan is the best for this. I haven't tried it, so we'll find out. So I've given you a rundown of the f of, of all the mechanics. Now I'm going to explain how everything comes into play. You see, I'm I'm producing orbs there. On my boots, as I might have mentioned, I have recuperation. Recuperation is the best thing to have on your boots because when you pick up an orb. It replenishes health each time. It doesn't start health regeneration. It just gives you a chunk. So to go with that, I have a Void and Arc Siphon. So getting Void and Arc double kills produces orbs. So Orb Central. Uh, I've got a Grenade. And I've got Utility Kickstart. And I've got Bomber on my, my Rift. So when I put down my Rift, I get a whole bunch. I've got two Bomber, actually. Get a whole bunch of Grenade Energy. When I use my Grenade and I use my Wealth, I have charges, armor charges, which I will have from picking up orbs. It will give me an amount of that back. Then Ionic Traces start replenishing my Rift, my Melee, and my, my Grenade when I'm collecting them. So it's all good. As you can see with this all underwater, because it was... I always drop down, as I say, turret, and then I think some people call it cone, I call it vex head. I know that that's the next one up. So I'm, I'm kind of comfortable with, with that rotation. I never really had to think about it. It was the first rotation of symbols that I worked out. So, as you can see, I've come up, as I said, three, three light bearer wizards. I'm going to activate this back statue first. And when you activate one statue and you've only got one vestige of light, then you deposit that. You don't have any more. The, la the first time, I had two vestiges of light. So, obviously, when I deposited one, I still have one, but the timer was still going down. So, it's up to you. Some people might prefer to go and get three vestiges of light and just get all three together. I don't really like doing that. Because you only get a minute and 18 seconds, so you've got a minute and 18 seconds from from the minute you kill the first wizard till uh, the minute you deposit the th the last of your three. So for me, it's it can be a little bit a little bit tight on time. Again, uh, I've got because of the weapons that I was using at the time, I've got arc and void scavenger. I would probably change the void if you're using this setup. I would change the void to kinetic. Uh, just to make sure that you're getting enough uh, shotgun ammo if you're using this. So you can see there, once I've marked the boss, once I've marked Ekthal with, with the deterministic, I'll just come round. That's the great thing about the Warlock. You're in the air, so you can, once you pop your super, you can manoeuvre. So when he put his wall up, I just went round the side of it and just kept hitting him with the super. Uh, the great thing about... Uh, Chaos Reach is, it stays active for quite some time, 
uh, the, the longer you hit the boss and you're also jolting them so it, it's big damage and there you go guys that is my solo guide on how to beat Ekthar for me this dungeon's really good but I feel like I know some people got a problem with the boss damage the boss health which I think is a bit extreme for a solo player but I think that there's one too many mechanics for my liking but the aesthetic of this dungeon is awesome Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this has helped. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, a like would be appreciated. Let me know what you think about this dungeon in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video.